You can lie, and cheat. But can you walk it off? If you like true cheating revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this cheating revenge episode, a cheating husband makes a promise, but falls back to his default setting of deception, costing him more in the end. One could call the second story petty, but a 10-floor walk of shame, sounds absolutely brutal. Lastly, a story from a soldier who goes on deployment, only to see his best friend and brother in arms, going for his cheating wife. Before we start, tell the like button you love it more than pizza, even though we all know, that isn't true. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge stories, might be disturbing to cheaters. The following story, is told from the female perspective. My ex-husband and I had a great divorce. Even though he cheated on me after 12 years, and two kids under four. I really wanted to do things differently than my parents did during their divorce. I never said anything negative about him, and tried very hard to defend him when the kids got upset with him. I extended invitations to the woman he left me for, so she wouldn't feel uncomfortable with me and we could become friends. She was basically their stepmom, so why not include her on everything? On holidays, we all had one big dinner, he and her and me and my boyfriend. This made everyone comfortable, and the kids never had to choose one side or the other as we were all on the same page. It was such a great relationship, that when I had back surgery, I recovered at his house and she cooked for me. He and I were coaches for the kids' basketball and baseball teams, and I helped at their wedding 13 years later. This was not easy for me, as he moved to another state to raise her children, leaving me to raise ours on my own. She quit her job when they got together and I had to return to work to support my kids. But I needed to keep the resentment and bitterness away from my kids. All of this sets the tone for the divorce, but when he initially left, I spoke to a lawyer and got a separation agreement that was really great, for me. He asked me to refrain from taking half of his retirement, but instead he would pay X amount in child support and additional Y in alimony. This because he was making a lot of money and I was a stay-at-home mom with a country club membership. I hate saying that, but it's necessary to picture the scene. Normally, alimony ends after 5 years, but because I didn't get half of the 401k, the only condition on ending it, was on my remarriage or my death, he agreed to all of this. The thing is, when he left me to move down to where she lived, he left his cushy job and took this promising, but not delivering, position that really screwed him financially. But, he never went back to the lawyer to get the child support or alimony reduced. Instead, he borrowed from his mother. When I discovered he was mooching off of her, I suggested to her that she should stop paying for him when he finally got back on his feet. She would never do that, and continued paying for his life, including for the stay-at-home mom. Even co-signing a second home for him when he finally moved back to raise the kids he had with me, hers had graduated and lived in his old house, ours were in high school. He did come to me and ask if I would accept regular child support and half of the alimony, then later when he was really earning money, he would pick back up on the past due amount. Not wanting to make waves in an otherwise great divorce, I said yes, and kept track each month of what was owed in a shared spreadsheet with him, so he could see how far in debt he was getting each month. He ended up owing me a little bit each month, times 10 years, but he said when the kids aged out of child support, he would continue to pay the same amount to make up for the alimony which totaled $120,000. When my daughter aged out, he continued to pay the same amount, putting a small dent in what he owed for three years. Then, as soon as my son aged out, I mean two weeks after he joined the Marines, he called me and told me. There's no way, I'll be continuing the payments for next couple of years, and you can take me to court for it. There's just no freaking way, I would pay you another cent. This completely blew my mind, as to this point we had such a fantastic relationship. It came out of nowhere. I was completely freaked out, but I took his advice, and I contacted an attorney. I sent all his calls to voicemail, per my attorney's advice and I took him to court. The best thing was, prior to the hearing, my attorney put a lien on both homes he had, so he could not change ownership to his mom or wife prior to the court hearing. I still have the phone call recording of the moment when he realized this, and the horrible names he called me for doing that. Since I had kept such immaculate records from that day he changed payments, and he was aware of his debt rising each month, it was a slam dunk for my attorney. Instead of making small payments for a few years, he had 30 days to pay me $120,000, in full. Unfortunately, the kids now have to choose which parent they visit on holidays, but that was not my fault. 
I was willing to continue as is and not put any strain on the family relationship. And for those who are wondering, yes, he did cheat on his new wife two times before they got married, but she had quit her job when they got together. Mostly because she found her sugar daddy, and had nothing to fall back on or nowhere else to go, so she stayed with him. Since we were friends, she shared this info with me, as I would understand what she was going through. I think the reason he went crazy on me, was that his mother refused to pay any more when my son aged out, but I explained that he still owed a ton in back pay. That's when he said, if you think I'm making payments to you forever, you're nuts. She had been paying his child support for 10 years because he never went back to a great paying job, even though he could have. I went to work after separation and have a great career now. But my income was still one quarter of his when we were together, because we moved every three years for his career. He wanted me to stay at home when the kids were born. I'll briefly explain something I noticed. As I experienced that some people don't understand, that as a stay-at-home mom, I couldn't contribute to my retirement fund because I didn't have earned income. Meaning no SS, 401k or IRA. So he maxed out his contributions, so we could live comfortably in retirement. After 10 years of marriage, I was legally entitled to half of his retirement. Since he asked me not to take half of his retirement, he offered alimony instead, then he decided not to pay what he offered and leave me with less retirement funds than I would have had in either case. This is why it was important for me to get what was due. Not to live a cushy life, but for my retirement. For the ones asking, yes, I got my money. I got it on day 29. No other payments will be made. This happened about 16 years ago. It's a story from a good friend who lives in South America. My friend, let's call her Maria, had been dating a guy called Oscar for two and a half years or so, when she found out through the grapevine, if you live in a small town, you'll understand, that Oscar had betrayed her. He'd been to a party, got a girl drunk and had sexy time with her. News of his actions had spread as gossip does. The worst part of it, was that it seemed that it wasn't the first time that it had happened by a long shot. Well, Maria heard and plotted revenge. She invited him to her flat for a special afternoon of fun with her, and her friend Vanessa. Oscar could not resist this temptation, so he went. Picture the scene. He goes into the building where she lives, gets into the lift to go up to the 10th floor to get to her apartment. He rings the bell in excitement. He can hear music playing from behind the door. She opens the door and he walks in, seeing both his girlfriend Maria, and her friend Vanessa are there, each wearing a sexy silk negligee. Maria is holding a blindfold, and tells him. Hey, baby, don't say anything. We want you to wear this. He agrees without doubt, and she puts it on him and tells him to get rid of his outfit. While he was busy, Vanessa put her clothes back on, walked out the apartment leaving a doorstop to keep the door open, and called the elevator up. She then walked back in, grabbed Oscar's clothes, and threw them out the window into the car parked below. She then left the apartment and went down the stairs, ringing doorbells as she descended. Maria had been leading Oscar around the apartment disorienting him, and then let him out the apartment. Then she closed the door behind her and got in the lift alone, yelling out one last time before the lift doors closed. I know what you did, you unfaithful bastard. Your clothes are in the car park, good luck. Oscar ripped off the blindfold, and must have realized how fricked he was, as he had to walk down 10 flights of stairs, skinny dip themed, passing laughing neighbors all the way. He collected his clothes, and Maria never saw him again. Some clarity, Maria went on the lift alone, and held it open on the ground floor. So he couldn't use it. Neighbors on the 10th floor had come out to see Oscar, setting him to walk down the stairs, thereby making it worse as Vanessa was going down the stairs, alerting as many people as possible. People were intrigued by the situation of this man walking down in confusion and shame, so lots of them followed him outside, so he had to dress with an audience. The humiliation of this walk, must have been brutal. Back in 2013, I was transferred from sunny San Diego to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I had been in the Marines for over four years, and had been sent to a unit that would finally give me the chance to deploy to Afghanistan. In case you don't know, before your unit deploys overseas, you have a mountain of classes and training to get done, which starts around six months or so prior to the date. I had become close friends with Joe, who's my senior most corporal, I was the only sergeant in my platoon, and we hung out all the time outside of work. We would barbecue, 
go to the gym, have parties with the families etc. Well that fateful time comes and we get sent to the land of never ending sand. About 4 months in, I start to get a funny feeling that something was not right, due to the lack of being able to talk to my wife on the phone or Facebook messenger. I do have a special skill that I honed from sneaking past my Vietnam veteran father, who was very set in that bedtime meant bedtime, and not raid the fridge for snacks time. So I am very quiet and you won't hear me coming, unless I want you to. One day, I came into our peb, just a big container that housed around 8 people in it, and seen my wife's face on the video chat of my best friend Joe, who didn't hear me until I shut the door. I played it off like nothing and the rest of the deployment had moments just like this, where I would see or hear them talking and just take notes, for my revenge. Before things really got to me mentally, our time in the sandbox was coming to an end and we flew home. The homecoming was uneventful other than my two-year-old not realizing who I was for a few minutes, then it was happiness all around. Just like before deploying, we have a mountain of classes after we get back to scan for TBI, traumatic brain injuries, mental health awareness, certifications, etc. Nobody was exempt from completing these various sleep-inducing PowerPoint classes, that were scheduled for that week. Out of nowhere, Joe had random appointments almost every day, or something would come up where he would have to leave, while everyone else was stuck all day long at a class, or at medical getting screened for everything under the sun. Do you ever have the feeling that your gut is telling you, 100%, that something is going on, but your brain is like, no, stop being paranoid? Well, that's what I was dealing with on a daily basis. I began to follow Joe a few days a week, when he would leave work early or have to make a call, and sure enough, his car would be right outside my house, every, single, time. When I finally confronted Joe, he denied it up and down like I was going crazy, and genuinely made me feel like I was offending him by the accusations. I quietly compiled the evidence and brought it all to the battalion sergeant major, who if you don't know, is the top of the food chain under the battalion commander. After a week or so I get called into the battalion commander's office to discuss his findings, and to ask me what I want to happen. My answer is simple. I want his rank. Justice came swift and painful, Joe was awarded loss of rank, forfeiture of half months pay for two months, restriction and extra duties. Shortly after we came back to the States, Joe was promoted to sergeant, and in less than a month, his rank was gone. I heard from mutual friends that he left his wife to be with his new girlfriend who is also pregnant with his third son. Oh and in case you're wondering, I was trying to stay with my wife for my son, but I found that that was a huge mistake. A few months after the dust settled, I was transferred back to San Diego to go on a cruise, and my wife and I were giving this our last shot. I went underway for two weeks and guess where she flies to, his house, to have their last bit of time together. After I found all of this out, I just lost any interest in being nice and making it work, I deployed on the ship, and actually met my new wife there. We've been together ever since, and I have been much happier than when I was being mentally tortured by my ex. Moral of the story, don't sexy time your best friend's wife. You stay till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. I want to take this moment, to thank you, I really appreciate you, because you bring me a great amount of joy. Subscribe for future uploads and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button, without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.